All right, we are live on air and we're back on Pia Shara Tuesday. If you're watching us, please do let us know where you are tuning in from. That was interesting to see my uh, producer and director here at KUTV, Bonfes Odiambo, for the first time in front of a camera. And it's interesting. Please do make sure you follow up on his work off Pitch Africa. He's doing amazing in trying to highlight the stories of sportsmen. He's a sportsman himself with the Kenyatta University men's vultures, uh, which is the hockey men's team, which won their game this weekend against the league winners. So it's quite a fit and also an important day for him, uh, a day of fasts, uh, I'm sure, for him and the team as well. So congratulations to the whole team and congratulations to uh, Boniface Odeambo to be very specific and off-pitch Africa, which you can be checking out on the work that he have, they have done so far. Now, you're invited for the International Wheelchair Day this Friday, 1st March 2024, which is a day to mark accessible technology, but to be very specific wheelchairs. And it's happening also a very important discussion that will be there at JQUAT. JQUAT is the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, and it's apt that they're the ones who are taking a look at this assistive technology. I'm having a discussion with a lecturer from uh, that side of university, which is uh, Dr. Mwangi Matheri at the Department of Rehabilitative Sciences. He's here already, as you can see with me on set, so I'm going to allow him to do justice to in his introduction. Uh, let us know of his department at JQUAT and what they're up to before we can get into the main discussion on why it's important that we have inclusive and accessible and sustainable assistive technology and wheelchairs for people who are living with disabilities within the Republic and globally at large. So, Dr. Mwangi, welcome to the show. Thank you for welcoming me to the studio. Uh, I'm Dr. Mwangi Maderi. I'm uh, an expert in uh, disability services uh, and support uh, area. And uh, my area specifically, basically, is physiotherapy. Mm but uh, within the broad area of rehabilitation. Okay. I'm currently the sitting head of Rehabilitation Sciences Department at the JKUAT, where we have host uh, three degree programs, Bachelor of Science in Physiotherapy, Bachelor of Science in Occupational Therapy, and Bachelor of Science in uh, Medical Social Work. Mm. And uh, we are the pioneer university in having a wheelchair service learning center in the region, actually. And uh, we are also uh, at the head of uh, the upcoming proposed uh, Regional Assistive Technology Center of Excellence uh, to be built uh, along Kenyatta Road, specifically uh, on uh, areas of assistive technologies, or the six areas of disability mm -hmm. experienced by a human person. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as a university, we are moving forward as a department to ensure that uh, we are broadly covering or broadly engaging in all the areas that uh, human beings require in order that they become included included in society yeah. and in all spheres of life. Okay. Yes. Welcome to the show. And uh, that sounds like a lot of work that you're doing and you're up to a what It's commendable and very apt for this conversation. So Friday is the International Wheelchair Day falls on March 1st. Could you let us know of the significance of this day um, and why it's observed? Yes, the International Wheelchair Day was proposed by Steve uh, uh, from UK, who is a blogger and mm -hmm. a wheelchair user mm -hmm. in 2008. And uh, they later on, of course, found that it is good to put it uh, within a day that uh, the International Wheelchair Users Day was uh, co uh, group was actually registered. Mm. And therefore, it becomes uh, a, a behavior, of course, developed from that uh, suggestion that we are able to observe uh, the wheelchair day in order to honor people who are using wheelchairs, their resilience, their ability to stand the whole day and uh, weeks and years using the wheelchairs and still engaging in the world is just like another person. Mm -hmm. So it is an important day because also we respect and honor those people who also have volunteered to support people using wheelchairs. And uh, in fact, you can imagine about the engineer, you can imagine about the health worker, mm -hmm. you can imagine about the cares, uh, caregiver, all those people that come together in order that they can support mm -hmm. that person with a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is also a time for us as a country and 
a, a people to reflect on the actual needs of people who are not able to walk. Yeah. Yes. All the needs. All the needs. Including the wheelchairs as the main conversation, but also uh, accessibility. Uh, uh, accessibility and mm -hmm. inclusion okay. in all spheres of life. Actually, the uniting to act or the call to action that I see here is a call for inclusive and collaborative efforts in combating persistent mobility barriers. So maybe if you can talk about the mobility barriers, how do they look like currently? Mobility barriers are created by us as society. Mm -hmm. Mobility barriers are those things that we construct uh, are amongst us like buildings mm -hmm. and we do not recognize that we are able to differently. Mm. Uh, mobility barriers are not providing for the mobility component. Mm -hmm. If you do not provide a gadget that provides this somebody with the ability to transit from one space to another, mm -hmm. that is a barrier by mm -hmm. not providing. Mm -hmm. And also mobility barriers are attitudinal mm -hmm. because we could have an attitude of not including people. Mm -hmm. And therefore we make uh, our ways to the spaces, whether in the sports arena, Mm -hmm. in recreational areas, mm -hmm. in classrooms, at place of work, by not creating those environments or adapting them mm -hmm. for those who are able to differently. Yeah. We, in, in a nutshell, actually are falling off and making the world not including mm -hmm. others and therefore creating barriers, uh, uh, creating barriers is actually a social issue. Yeah. Yes. And it needs fixing by everyone. By it everyone, society, Not yes. just people living with disabilities. This yeah. is uh, something that even if you didn't have someone living with disability or able differently should be thinking about. So if I was that kind of person um, and we are talking about accessibility and inclusion, how do I participate? Um, let's say I have no one in my family who's living with disability, but this is an important conversation for everyone else in society. How do I come in? If you're talking International Wheelchair Day, are these also people that you're considering in the conversation and how do you plan to include them? Yes, you can be born in a family and you don't have somebody with a disability. Yeah, and it's very but, hard But uh, it is also yeah. important to realize that you, me you meet all the people in mm -hmm. your house. Yeah. And therefore, they are grandmas and grandpas. Mm -hmm. And probably also, if you are not fortunate to have met them, you have seen your neighbors. Mm -hmm. And also, when you venture out, you also meet the society where we have uh, those uh, different abilities. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you are part and parcel of the society. Yeah. beyond your family. Yeah. You are part of and of and parcel of the society and therefore and number two you also need to remember that uh, you are only at this time walking yeah. and not facing barriers. Mm. But the next time you go to a hospital and probably again you are not able to do things, you meet yourself on a wheelchair or a mm. stretcher. Now it's now it's you now. And now it's you now. Mm. So you are we are all candidates yeah. of uh, needing a wheelchair. Yeah. And therefore, by participating in the awareness and uh, activities around uh, reminding people of the need to create inclusive societies and inclusive environments, mm -hmm. you are actually uh, helping to make the environment in which you might meet yourself mm. conducive, adaptable, and therefore not restricting. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Collaboration is key uh, to achieving this inclusivity, and I'm sure that also involves that sensitization of the public, uh, stakeholders, key decision makers, developmental partners. Um, I think we can also talk about that uh, before we get into the uh, details of the day itself. Um, does ZECWAT collaborate with other institutions, organizations on projects which are related to this assistive technology? Definitely. We are in collaboration with Motivation Charitable Trust. Okay. Uh, Latter day Saints, mm. we have uh, Tim Wanyonyi, Honorable Tim Wanyonyi, who is uh, a strong supporter. Mm -hmm. we, he, he, he is the founder of the Kenya Parap Paraplegic Organization. Oh, nice. And therefore, he is playing a key role in uh, actually the provision of uh, or uh, the key role of uh, providing people who are able differently mm -hmm. with assistive technologies and particularly the wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. And is keen to ensure that every person in Nairobi has a wheelchair that is appropriate. And of course, he is repentant of what he may have done in the past, mm -hmm. not having provided yeah. uh, an assistive technology that is appropriate. Mm. And therefore, also, we have other partners in uh, coming in mm. because we have the WHO. We are working closely with WHO. We are mm -hmm. working closely with the MOH mm -hmm. rehabilitation section. And therefore, we have actually working collaborations in JKUAT that mm -hmm. are making 
the issue of the wheelchair service av uh, availability and also functional actually um, or to function mm -hmm. that's what i mean okay uh, all right, all right. So when we are speaking about uh, the partnerships, it means that this is an issue that uh, spreads uh, far and wide. Maybe an understanding of uh, the extent to which uh, PWLDs and maybe uh, children, which I think has been a very specific uh, mention here uh, from you, that children living with disabilities are also uh, largely excluded or a, part, a big part of this population which is excluded uh, in matters of inclusion and accessibility. To what extent? Uh, if we have numbers or even just a scope of how big this problem is. Let's think about our population. Mm. Uh, our population, the biggest layer mm. of our population are children who need to go to school. Yeah. And uh, a child may have a disability uh, before birth, mm. during birth, or after birth. All of us gain disability that way. Mm. And of course, the interaction with the environment in which we live, mm. we develop disabilities. Now, imagine that a child is born with a disability, or before birth, after birth, or during birth. Mm. And then that child has to go to school to develop the skills or the learnings the brain needs and then the learnings to skills in a college in order that they become adults mm. with employable skills. Mm. Now, that child is not provided with assistive technologies and therefore, and they cannot be admitted in a school if the parent cannot come with a child with an assistive technology like a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. that it means the child will remain at home, technically blocked from the school entry, and therefore the, the passwords of the necessary knowledges that are supposed to be embedded in his brain, mm -hmm. and eventually he becomes an adult who can function, who can create income for himself, that child is excluded. Yeah. Number two, the child is excluded together with the mother because the mother or the caretaker who is left with the child mm -hmm. cannot go to earn an income. So the mother loses the job mm -hmm. because he has to take care of a disabled person in the society who belongs to the society. Mm -hmm. And therefore she becomes, she becomes a caretaker of the future generation right. and loses a job, does not have income. Mm -hmm. What happens? That child whose mother has no income ends up without food or ability to access good food. Mm. And that child uh, therefore suffers or is likely to suffer from malnutrition. That's true. Malnutrition will bring about diseases that would worsen his already uh, disabled situation. Mm. And that worsening of the situation will make, we, is likely to lead to more disability. Right, and more disability in the family. Uh, sorry, beyond the disability, there is also poverty mm -hmm. that ensues because every time the mother does not go to work, every time she does not make money, every time she loses on the situation of making the family better. Mm, yeah, so it's now, a problem that's building up upon another. Now, mm -hmm. the housing type that they would end up in is maybe in the shacks mm -hmm. or in the streets. Because the mother cannot attain the money she requires to pay for rent, for example, mm -hmm. for a good house. A house with water, a house with good toilets, a house which has good amount of air, an area where there is a, the environment looks conducive, mm -hmm. and maybe probably also away from the school. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the child will be excluded in many ways. It's getting worse. Accessibility and inclusion is getting worse. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. Mm. That is um, an interesting perspective for people who might not have the bigger picture of what the effects are looking like if we don't think about accessibility and inclusion from the very initial stages. And while we are still at that and partnerships and, um, of course, ensuring that the whole society is rallying behind this, part of the activities that... Um, you're up to and will be up to uh, in this trying to bring together persons with disabilities um, around the world and of course in Kenya to be specific is the assessment of wheelchair users and issuing of uh, custom-made um, 
wheelchair users, wheelchairs, right? And we've seen this kind of efforts from everyone in society. And you're saying that there's a need for us to also assess the kind of uh, wheelchairs that we are uh, giving to the people who are living with disabilities. Why is there a need for that? And what kind of risks um, are there present in the random, I would call it the random distribution and giving out of wheelchairs? Let me begin by saying that uh, the day of uh, International Wheelchair Day mm -hmm. is a day of raising awareness. Yeah. So we need to raise awareness, generally. Mm. Second, is to focus on actual provision of an appropriate wheelchair. Mm. We want to demonstrate that we need to provide the wheelchair by assessing the client, mm -hmm. fitting the client, and then training the client on how to use the wheelchair. Yeah. An appropriate wheelchair is that wheelchair that is assembled mm. to meet the needs of that particular person mm. in terms of his body size, in terms of his weight, in terms of his lifestyle, mm. in terms of what they do and where they live also. Because a wheelchair that cannot enter an office, for example, this studio, mm is not appropriate for the person who is working in this studio and has a disability or does not have and he has come to be interviewed. Mm. A wheelchair that cannot uh, go on a rough road where somebody lives or the sandy beaches of Mombasa is not appropriate for the use in that environment. Mm. A wheelchair that cannot support the person from all the sides and take the body weight and distribute it equally so that they do not get tired. They take the whole day mm. using the wheelchair. Yeah. It is not appropriate. A wheelchair that has taken somebody's posture to become a deformity, mm. or rather the posture might have been good initially, but because of the inappropriate wheelchair, oh, they have to fit. In. They have to carve themselves to fit in the wheelchair that wheelchair is not appropriate. It is not good to use. Right. We cannot donate a wheelchair and claim to have done justice to a person with a disability because what they do is the unfitting wheelchairs end up uh, having uh, developing, uh, creating person's environments uh, to become an, an environment in which they develop bad postures, mm. deformities, and eventually, they cannot even fit in an appropriate wheelchair. Mm. They also develop pressure sores. How much does it cost to treat a pressure sore? 350 to maybe a million. Wow. It depends on the hospital you go. How long does it take? Six months to one year. What happens if somebody was incontinent and contaminated the wheelchair? Mm. Uh, no, or contaminated the, 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 the wound mm -hmm. or the ulcer. Yeah. It can go uh, into the blood as an infection mm. and then uh, you need very very strong drugs for medication and admission in probably hdu and icu mm -hmm. and you may never come back to the society because of that assistive technology that was supposed to make your life better. that was donated yeah and somebody thought that he had done justice it is injustice mm. to provide an inappropriate wheelchair and we are insisting that a wheelchair should be included in the medical list mm -hmm. of medicines which NHIF is covering, the medical list of the things that are recognized as things that uh, as medicines that should help persons who need care, mm. because a wheelchair is one of the care items. Somebody may need an antibiotic, another one may need um, another form of drug, mm. like for diabetes, mm. another one may need uh, mental health. Uh, drugs, but one needs a wheelchair. They are equally uh, having equal rights. Yeah, I see it. That's true. 
that uh, the government has a very important uh, part to play in ensuring that there's also safety in these uh, wheelchairs. And I was go actually going to get into uh, that next part, which is disability mainstreaming. And maybe you can let us know uh, what that means, uh, because it's uh, maybe a new term to many of us. And how important, uh, because now you've already touched on it, that they can include this in the what they're covering in the health insurance fund. Um, in what other ways can the government further support initiatives like what is happening at JQuat in creating a more inclusive environment for people living with disabilities, but also specifically to wheelchairs, uh, such that if I am in Kisi, uh, personally I, I do have a I do have an aunt who has uh, mobility issues, uh, so they re they do actually require a wheelchair. And one of the things that we've struggled with so far is to get her one that is appropriate for her. So that's been changing every year on, she needs a different wheelchair. Um, in what ways can the government further support to ensure that these users can get to facilities, maybe they may not access the JQuad service center, but they get to facilities where they can check the, um, how good it is, maybe servicing and all the other necessary um, measures around getting safe wheelchairs. Yes, let's, uh, let us begin at disability mainstreaming. Yeah. Do people understand what mainstreaming means? Mm. Mainstreaming means all areas of government services, education, mm. employment, sports and recreation, infrastructure in terms of buildings, roads, that is transport, all aspects of human living, right? Whether you are a lecturer, you are a student, you are a military officer, all aspects and where human beings go and do things in order they, they learn if it is in school or they earn income if it is a job. Mm -hmm. All those areas are mainstream areas, yeah. including social services. And therefore disability mainstreaming is to ensure all those areas, if they are built environments, they are inclusive. If they are policies, they are inclusive and therefore they, are, they do not exclude people who are abled differently. Whatever the situation is, whether it is a service or what, whether it is a, a, an area where somebody goes and rests and uh, enjoys, all those areas when they are built in recognition of the different abilities and therefore they become inclusive, that is what you call disability mainstreaming. Yeah. Disability mainstreaming uh, allows that the universities, all universities, should be able to admit students who are able to differently mm -hmm. and give them education without telling them, you, you are deaf or you, you are blind you cannot fit in this university, yet they are, mm -hmm. in, they are actually national institutions, mm -hmm. facilities, from where learning and training takes place. Mm -hmm. uh, JK Yuat is heading there, right. KU has been there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it is every aspect of our lives where people go, mm -hmm. that is disability mainstreaming. Right. From the aspect of what we are doing, mm. we are only doing a little of what we should do, and you should also do a little of what you should do, and an, the other person and other partners also should contribute a little of what they know and they can do yeah. in order to make the environment in which human beings live inclusive, and also that uh, the lives of persons with disabilities are improved, mm. and therefore they enjoy a good quality of life. Right. Um, while we are still on government, I think a uh, very uh, special shout to Senator Crystal Asige, who uh, was also born and abled differently, but is now fighting for the rights of people living uh, or people who are abled differently. We are trying to uh, change also the vocabulary uh, around, you know, we've moved, at least we've made steps from uh, when we, we were insisting that disability is not inability. And now I think everyone has forgotten the word inability. It doesn't exist anymore. I think now it's time to, uh, for us to move to the next uh, phase of this language, which is abled differently. I think that's uh, also part of inclusion uh, within society. So Crystal Asige has been fighting for uh, that, those kind of rights. And
and uh, that representation as well in Parliament framework around the policies which are necessary to ensure this. And I'm sure Honorable Timothy Wanyonyi has also been at the forefront of this. So it's, uh, it's, it's very encouraging to see that there are people even within government uh, who are also representing and taking care of this. And this is happening in both houses, so uh, very commendable, I think, there. Now, um, when we're talking about accessibility and inclusion, I think affordability is also part of this conversation. Um, how is JQuot looking around uh, affordability and maybe even uh, efforts from partners and organizations? How can we do, what can we do to ensure uh, that it's affordable because as I said I have actually an aunt um, who has who is also able differently and needs a wheelchair but they are quite expensive to be honest um, how do we how do we tackle the issue of affordability uh, affordability is an issue of uh, many factors mm. but uh, all said and done affordability is an issue of uh, W when government wants to make income mm. or raise taxes uh, on matters uh, on issues on matters on the equipment mm. or the facilities or the ATs assistive technologies mm. that are required by persons with disabilities yeah. if somebody wants to make profit out of them then i think uh, i think that is when the government needs now to come clear mm. and remove all the taxes yeah Right. Then, of course, there are other players within the circle of uh, the assistive technologies and matters disability. Mm. What is there that we can remove in order that uh, we can make this person afford this wheelchair? Right. If we work uh, as collaboratively as uh, partners, we can decrease the price of the wheelchair. Right. Yeah. And we make it. Uh, available to people. Mm. Number two, we have wheelchairs which are be, which are being sold in Nairobi and other places, mm -hmm. which are aluminium, and within six months they break down and they cost about fifteen thousand. Mm. If the government had put a caveat that no such wheelchairs should be coming in Kenya, mm. right? We restrict and we insist that the wheelchair that is going to be brought into this market mm -hmm. has value for the money. Then we would have wheelchairs which are taking three years, four years, five years without breaking down. Yeah. And at least the canvas and other uh, aspects of the wheelchair will have broken down before the metal. Mm. And probably also they can have been repaired once or twice. Mm -hmm. That is what JKUAT is insisting. We have developed a prototype wheelchair which we, has take, we have taken through clinical trials. Nice. And which we want and we are insisting that we should go full hog to national manufacturing. Mm. So that, that wheelchair, we have checked and found that uh, people are com uh, saying it is comfortable, it is aesthetic, and if we can have a variety of those wheelchairs, but locally assembled, manufactured, we shall bring down the cost of the wheelchair and its access. Mm. Number two, with the upcoming WHO 80s Center of Excellence, W its logistics is to include the cancer distribution chain okay. in order to make the wheelchair to move to every county, mm. right, through the cancer chain. So if JQuart is playing that role in terms of bringing uh, together the partners and also harnessing the synergies of the partners in order to make things work for the person with a disability. You don't have to go to Kisi to take the wheelchair. You will only tell your mother that the wheelchair has been brought to the county. Yeah. And therefore, she will only need to send somebody and probably again, she will have to attend uh, to a clinician, to go to a clinician for assessment, yeah. fitting, so that the wheelchair that she's given is not any from the store. Yeah. It is that which meets her needs. Yeah. Yes. Tailored very specific very specific to her needs yeah yes okay so custom made wheelchairs are going to be a very big way in which we uh, maybe subsidize this cost custom made wheelchairs yeah are one way of not subsidizing the cost mm. but uh, yes alleviating the, alleviating cost, the cost the cost yeah. of sitting on a wheelchair yeah the cost of having a, a, a an ulcer or a pressure so that would take will gobble mm. 350 to a million yeah and even probably death yeah. in the family. Yeah. The cost of having wrong things will be alleviated, postponed, stalled, and probably uh, we shall have longevity 
in terms of the lives of persons with disabilities who are sitting on wheelchairs. Right. Yes. That's a great uh, that's great efforts happening at JQuart and um, I think every other in high institution of higher learning should emulate. It's time that we moved to um, a phase where research and such kind of activities are ingrained within our institutions of higher learning. KU has been making efforts, JQuart as well, and uh, we're hoping to have this across, of course. Um, institutions of higher learning, which set pace even for the government in terms of you know what is needed and where studies uh, that are necessary um, and in which areas that we are lacking. Let's speak about the day itself now on Friday. Um, one, is it an open invite for people to just come through to JQuart and observe the day and get sensitized? Um, I know there's training that uh, could happen. What kind of activities are geared for that day? Yeah, we have two specific things we shall do. Okay. We shall uh, raise awareness. We shall meet at the flyover of JKU at, uh, that is the Juja flyover. We shall have a band to work with us nice. to drum up support from the public to sensitize them. We shall walk uh, through all the way to the gate, main gate of JK Watt. And then of course, after entering the university, we shall have the guests uh, give speeches and opinions and uh, ap appreciation of people with disabilities. And of course, we have also planned for uh, at least a group of between 20 and 40, the number that can come, who can be provided with wheelchairs. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because you're the um, head at the department and uh, taking care of rehabilitative sciences, and I just give hope for uh, institutions of higher learning, maybe now to bring it back down to JQuart. Your look into the future. Um, your hopes and aspiration for JQuart's continued contribution to creating a world without barriers and for people with disabilities. What are your hopes and aspirations there? My hopes and aspirations is uh, gaining uh, more numbers of students mm -hmm. who are well trained and fitted for the purpose. Yeah. And JKUART being a national institution where we admit students from all corners of Kenya and of course outside from uh, Tanzania, from Malawi, from uh, Nigeria, we have students. Uh, when we train students within our curriculum, we are likely to achieve what we call sustainability in terms of the wheelchair, appropriate wheelchair uh, skills uh, that are necessary for the provision of the wheelchairs and also for the repair and maintenance mm -hmm. of the same from across the region. Mm -hmm. That is my dream to have uh, the distribution of the competencies across Kenya and the world and uh, the East African region. Okay. Yes, uh, the other thing is um, I'm hoping by the movement that we have created and the energy that we have, we would like to appeal to Honorable Tim Wanyonyi mm -hmm. and the other one you have mentioned is Crystal Asige. Asige. Yes. And uh, also uh, uh, Emeritus Bishop Jackson Kosge. Okay. The three and others within parliament mm. and the senate to please uh, sponsor back the disability bill. Okay. Which was drawn out by the previous regime, uh, uh, the previous legislatures mm -hmm. of senate and probably parliament. Yeah. And it has never come back. Kenya does not have a disability bill. Mm -hmm. It has a disability act. An act and a bill are two different things. Mm -hmm. The bill will be followed by the money that is required by people with disabilities and in the space mm -hmm. specifically for assistive technologies and enable us for the caregivers and other people who require to benefit from what the country resources have mm -hmm. and how the country resources are distributed. Mm -hmm. They are not distributed by the act. They are distributed via bills and white paper. Okay. Okay. That is a call out to 
all the government and the stakeholders. Of course, we have been speaking disability mainstreaming, but focusing specifically on the International Day that marks um, wheelchairs or the International Wheelchair Day, 1st of March 2024, uh, this Friday. Hopefully, after that conversation, uh, they plan to generate a report that is evidence-based, uh, used that will be used further in designing an intervention-based disability mainstreaming approach. And all these efforts are being done by JQuad and accountability of course, also through Disability Mainstreaming Foundation of Kenya. Thank you very much, Dr. Mwangi Matheri, for having a conversation with us. That was uh, Dr. Mwangi from JQuad Department of Rehabilitative Sciences. And uh, that brings us to the end of the conversation here this morning. If you are uh, out there and would like to observe the day, you have someone able differently in your home, would like to get training, get information on uh, you know special needs, accessibility, please make sure that uh, you show up at JQuat on Friday, 1st of March. And I think I'll give uh, Dr. Mwangi this chance, maybe a call to action, a last word, uh, maybe generally on accessible and assistive uh, tech, and uh, just a last word for sensitization purposes. Thank you very much. Uh, it is uh, a duty for everyone to make sure that no member of his family is excluded because of uh, the environment we have created at home the environment that is outside our compounds, then uh, the, the rules and regulations that we do propose in institutions where we work, and also in churches where we go uh, for religious activities. If you observe in Kenya, you will find that uh, in uh, most churches, we have people who are deaf, but we have no signers. We have people who are blind, but we have nobody to escort them. Yeah. We need to change our rules and regulations within our institutions. We need to change uh, to input or to actually invest more in our environments. We need to invest more in uh, the sens uh, sensitiveness or we raise sense, uh, the, the awareness of every member of the society in order that they can contribute and help people with disabilities and also avoid taking advantage of them. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, as we speak, we need also to ensure that there are written rules and regulations that actually shout uh, against discrimination uh, uh, because Kenya as a society, as a bigger society, is a member of the UNCRPD, mm -hmm. the United Nations uh, Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. We are conscious to that as a country. We should be conscious to that as institutions. We should be conscious to that as a people. And actually, what benefit does it have when you have not served? Yeah. Bible, the, the Bible is very clear that you draw more in God's attention if you give service to humanity. Right. Yes, thank, thank you. you very much too, as well, Dr. Mwangi. Every single person, regardless of ability, deserves respect, opportunity, and a fulfilling place within our communities. Therefore, uh, for this International Wheelchair Day, let's go beyond simple awareness and turn into action. And as well, let's break down the barriers, as Dr. Mwangi has been saying, they are both physical and social, uh, which hold people who are able differently back within our society. Educate yourself about the different disabilities. Challenge your own biases and actively create environments which enhance inclusivity and accessibility within our schools. If you're coming up with inventions, think about how uh, people who are living with disabilities can be using that uh, within your social circles. Is that a consideration as well? If you're organizing a meetup, do you have that in mind? Challenge your own biases. Think about everyone else uh, within society. Together we can build a world where disability is not a barrier to achieving your dreams, but also just simply a part of a rich spectrum of human diversity. And that's what International Wheelchair Day will be also all about, ensuring that we're giving them access and in an affordable and sustainable manner that will ensure they're active participants of the economy. We will all reap benefits and also avoid the risks that come with not taking care or not taking good care of how this assistive technology is availed Thank you for keeping in to or tuning into this conversation. We'll be uploading it, this specific segment, on YouTube, KUTV Kenya. You can watch it now, watch it on International uh, Wheelchair Day so that you get more information if you missed out on anything that Dr. Tari has been saying here on set. 
Biashara Tuesday takes a short break. I'll be right back with the newspaper review section, having a look at what is happening all over the world, putting it into perspective in how you are affected in terms of income making and generation. Where are you losing money? Where are you gaining this week? Don't go too far. <laughs>